Welcome to this three-part video series where we talk about IPOs and why it's relevant to many Swiss companies and for Euronext. Today, I'm talking to Søren, who is the director for Euronext here in Switzerland, and I'm very excited to have you here. Maybe you give us a short introduction about yourself. So first of all, Cedric, it's good to have you here. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Søren Gjørnes. I am Norwegian by origin, but I've been living now in Switzerland for 30 years. I originally studied business at the University of Fribourg, and through my career, I've been focusing on entrepreneurship uh, and the financing of, uh, of companies, the development of companies. I've been doing this from different sides. So I've been doing this as um, in incubation, in venture capital. I've been doing growth financings. I've also been doing management buyouts. Uh, or partially also distressed um, management uh, of assets. And I've also been an interim manager into companies that were owned by private equity. Uh, and I've been a capital markets and financing advisor, advising companies around topics of financing. From that point of view, I, I hope that I can bring something to the companies that I'm working together with. Uh, you are a director at Euronext. Uh, before we get into what Euronext is, maybe explain what your job is within Euronext. Of course, my, uh, my main focus is to uh, assure that there are IPOs coming from Switzerland. Uh, to do that, I need to, sh to create awareness of this opportunity. I need to give entrepreneurs this dream back and that they actually somehow have in their back head. I am a sparing partner for them when it comes to questions about their concrete uh, possibility and I have to sh show them how the, it could fit for them, what kind of preparation they need to have. Uh, and then uh, I connect them to the parties that I deem right for their situation. To some extent, I also have to motivate them to take this step. Uh, although they want to do it very often, they still uh, feel a little bit afraid for uh, doing so. And that is why I also need to help them. Now let's talk about your next. Your next is definitely one of the big players when you look at, at stock exchanges around the world. Uh, maybe give us a short history of like where you, what your next is and like where it is today. So Euronext is the largest uh, stock exchange uh, in the continental Europe, actually in, in Europe as, as such. We have 1,300 companies uh, issued uh, or, or listed on our stock exchange. They are worth uh, currently uh, 3.4 trillion, so 3,400 billion uh, euros. Of those 1,300 companies, 350 companies are tech companies. Uh, of that, again, uh, slightly over 200 are ICT, fintech companies, around 90 are life sciences, and 45 are in clean tech. Very interesting companies and peers for potential uh, companies coming from Switzerland to our markets. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe explain to us, give us some statistics about, let's say, Swiss companies that are currently listed uh, at Euronext. There are uh, currently 10 companies listed on, on Euronext from Switzerland. Uh, the most uh, famous one is Holstein Lafarge, which is a large one, which is a dual listing. Then we also have companies like Acta Record, which makes industrial doors, and Televerbier, uh, for those who are, are skiing and have skied in, in Verbier. Uh, we have a biotech company uh, from Geneva called Genoiro, which is uh, quoted with uh, us. And we also have, for example, uh, GenQtex, which is the result of a, a reverse merger uh, with a listed company. And then you had like one, uh, one IPO last night. That is correct. Which one was that? So Sequana Medical actually rang the bell yesterday morning. Sequana Medical is a company which is uh, one floor down from me here. So it is one of my neighbors here in, in Technopark. It is a company that has made a, a pump that can be implanted in the body uh, for the drainage of residual fluids in the body. The company completed its IPO yesterday morning where it then raised 27.5 million uh, of new funds, market capitalization, post money of 107 million euros. Let's leave aside for a second uh, your next and talk about IPOs, uh, the initial public offering. For everybody out there who has no idea why they should go public, what is it like that you tell them why is an IPO the right thing for a tech company? It very much depends on, on the tech company itself and, and the kind of positioning it has. Uh, and also the kind of potential that is in the technology. So this is something that I look upon together with the entrepreneurs. If I deem that the company has you know, uh, quite a large addressable market and a huge opportunity, and also maybe it is a platform technology, so it is only currently focusing on one or two of the dimensions and applications of its technology, it is important that that company actually continues to develop uh, the technology and also uh, applies that to uh, other applications. I think that is often for the good of humanity uh, so that we can actually solve problems that we have in society. Now you can imagine the kind of funding which is necessary for that on one side 
and the, the time and the persistence that is necessary then. And that is why some companies definitely should go uh, for an IPO instead of going for a trade sale. Yeah. What, ha what has very often been the case uh, lately in, in uh, or the last 15 years in Switzerland is that uh, there has been to a certain extent through the ecosystem a brainwash that it is uh, ridiculous to think and dream of an IPO, but the, that the company should rather go for a trade sale. And I'm actually giving companies that dream back. Why do you think this happened? Why do you think like people think that an IPO is a dream? Well, it is a dream because you can be independent. You can develop the company further. You can realize the full potential of the technology which is there. And I think that is something that management teams and founders really want to do. I think, you know, technology developments and innovations take time. They're not done overnight. And that is why it takes more than those seven, eight years, which are the time horizon of most venture capitalists. And that is why venture capitalists often have had an interest to realize an exit. Uh, that could be premature for the company. And, uh, and this is what we're also seeing. We're also actually seeing that venture capitalists increasingly find an IPO also a, a, an interesting way of realizing an investment. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at all of uh, the different companies that are potential of, of listing themselves or IPOing on, on your next, why do you think um, they should choose your next over all of the other uh, listing opportunities that they have around the world? Well, there are not so many other places they can go, uh, to be frank. What is important for a tech company is that it is not alone in the stock market where it goes. It needs to have peers, so comparable companies uh, that it can, uh, you know, uh, benchmark itself with. We have, like I, I already told you, we have 350 tech companies altogether. So that is a rich fundus of comparable companies uh, for them to compare themselves with. And that is important on one side. What is also very important is that around the stock exchange, which is a platform, there are banks and other advisors which are helping these companies and which are used to working with these companies. And uh, very important that there are small and mid-cap investors with a certain affinity for mm -hmm. technology. So those are, are very important criteria. As an entrepreneur, you decide, okay, your next is the right place. Uh, what is it that you would say are the biggest advantages of your next? It really does come back to what I said. You know, there is uh, many companies. They are they have you know already proven that they can grow together with uh, the stock market. This growth perspective is interesting. Uh, there are very many so-called active investors, so really investors that do stock picking and really want to 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 seek jewels, which mm -hmm. are active in our markets. And that is, uh, you know, the reason why they will uh, be more successful coming to us. Now, when you say, when you look at the journey of an entrepreneur from the early stages of financing rounds till an IPO, yeah. what is kind of like the roadmap that someone has to take to be, I would say, quote unquote, eligible for an IPO? We talked already about the, the business opportunity as such. So that has to be, you know, uh, given to a certain extent, there has to be a huge opportunity there. It cannot be mm -hmm. too focused and too mini school. That being said, uh, an entrepreneur should, you know, over time see to that he has a very strong and broad team. He should uh, be ready when it comes to documentation. It is always something that pays off. If you have a good documentation within the company, we're talking here about management presentations, about data room, uh, about business planning, financial planning, so that you really can show the solidity of the opportunity. That is quite important. Also build the company from a corporate governance perspective and have the willingness to open up. That is very important. Very often companies are too private and they need to say, okay, I want to open up and, and I want to go to the public market. And if you look at, like, say, more of the logistics, how important is it to live around your next physically as an entrepreneur? Definitely should want to do is to, you, you need to tell investors your story. You need to be able to convey it time and again. You need to show why it is a strong story and why you are, you know, delivering on, on the promises you have made in that story. So that is definitely something you shouldn't be afraid of. Uh, doing so is something you do on a pan-European scale. So you really have to, you know, uh, have that willingness, but you don't have to be physically in our, one of our markets. Mr. Erwin, thank you so much. This was part one where we talked about introduction to an IPO and what your next is. Make sure to tune in uh, next time when we talk about IPOs for specifically Swiss companies. See you there.